It all started when the concept was presented to Ann about having an all-girls school that would be her namesake which she was thoroughly excited about. Nothing was more important to Ann than education and empowering young women. Ann was really looking for something where she could have an impact on women, whether it was girls, children, grown-up women, whatever. And that had been the focus of her life, along with education. Uh, our team at AISD in about 2005 um, started to look at the needs of our district for quality programming, meeting the needs of children. We became aware of the work um, of Ann Tisch in New York and the girls' school model. So we were looking for the ability to kind of be innovative. And then one day, uh, a wonderful gentleman named Lee Posey appeared at my door and talked about his vision, that he wanted to create a network to support schools that would educate young women. Well, I can remember she couldn't believe that uh, Mr. Posey was going to offer a grant of a million dollars to get these schools going. It wasn't just going to be in Austin. Uh, the Ann Richards School was going to be in Austin, but uh, this was his form of philanthropy because of the way he grew up, uh, the way his single mother made, raised him, and the value he put on education through a public school system. Um, and so she thought, wow, this is the, one of the uh, greatest opportunities in the world to do something that I really, really do believe in. So she spent a lot of time putting together the initial board for a foundation to help supplement what the school needed for these girls, because this was just such a new project. mother gave me such a gift, giving me the opportunity to get involved with the school early on and to help um, with the formation of it as she passed on. Ellen um, felt a great, tremendous uh, responsibility to carry on her mother's legacy just like she would want it to be done. Um, and everyone here was, you know, committed to do that. Uh, so, you, I mean, you could almost hear Anne's voice barking out orders as she would go through the halls. I remember the first board meeting because there was, uh, I had mixed feelings about it. It was kind of a melancholy meeting because it was very soon after uh, Governor Richards passed away and very shortly after her funeral. And so it was joyous on the one hand because we were kicking off this fabulous school and sad on the other hand because it was so soon after her passing and we had so looked forward to her chairing the meeting. And more than anything else, everybody wanted to make sure that we did what Ann would want, which was to ensure that this was going to be an exemplary school and it was going to be open to all young women, regardless of race or socioeconomic backgrounds, and that it was going to be fair and it was going to provide an opportunity for young women to exceed with opportunities they might not otherwise have had. There was no infrastructure, so we had to develop everything. I think what you have to do is find a visionary like Jeannie Goka um, and get them on your team to make sure that as the school is created, you've got someone who really knows how to navigate the politics of the school environment and understands all the pieces that need to be that need to come together to create a successful program. I would go to all of the elementary schools in um, Austin at that time and even to the middle schools because we were opening with grades six and seven to pitch the story of the school. And, and I would have to tell the story of what all the wonderful things we were going to do. And sometimes I'd have to prevaricate because the little girl would say, are you gonna have an orchestra? And of course I would have to say, yes, we're going to have an orchestra. And then I'd race back and I'd say like, oh, well, I've gotta have an orchestra. And we did. The first day of school at the Ann Richards School was a party beyond school parties. The buses arrived, all the board members were here, all the faculty came out, we had streamers. As the kids got off the bus, we were welcoming them to the school. I, I don't think they were prepared for all these adults out there you know, with streamers and saying, hi, welcome to school. 
What we saw was incredible passion. These are sixth and seventh graders. Many of them have to travel over an hour to get here, but the number of parents and relatives that were here with cameras crying to see that their daughters, nieces, grandchildren were coming to a school that presented them with the future. In 2017, there was a bond that passed and we were luckily part of that bond and um, were afforded this new beautiful um, building. What was really um, wonderful for us was that we could talk to the faculty, talk to the students, and really do some planning and dreaming about what is it that we need in a facility. What matches our mission and our vision of what learning should look like, which is collaborative, lots of common spaces for the girls to mix grade levels, but also ha have spaces of their own. One of our biggest goals when we opened the school was to make sure that we were giving girls an opportunity to discover and explore STEM careers and STEM fields. All of our teachers got involved in the maker mentality, uh, but once we had the maker space, every teacher was interested in creating some kind of project within their um, curriculum by having students create some kind of artifact in the maker space or um, you know, multiple subject areas were getting together and coming up with projects where they could actually use the maker space in a meaningful way. In our new building, the the academic neighborhoods are designed to be um, collaborative in and of themselves. The classrooms are, have retractable walls or glass walls and collaborative spaces throughout them that can be used for small groups, large groups, you know, whole grade level projects. Teachers work together a lot more on true interdisciplinary units where every subject area is getting involved um, in a project. It's not just a science project or just a math science project. It's a project where every single content area from science to language arts to social studies to math is getting involved in the planning of those projects, the delivery of those projects, and the culmination of those projects. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty exciting to see. <laughs> Building this building um, was part of a learning experience for our students and for our staff. We got to every day see different parts of the building um, happening and being created. Something that we dreamed of was being created in front of our eyes and the girls were part of that process. They helped us um, in the design process. They helped us with, uh, they had internships with the uh, construction company. They had internships with our architects uh, and they were, they were were instrumental in what this building looks like today. It was so exciting to be able to walk around and show the girls, hey, we talked about what the commons was going to be and how we were all going to be able to gather there. And then look, this is what you created. This is what your dreams became. I don't think anybody could have imagined uh, where we were and where we are now our graduates coming back, talking to our students, saying, if I can do it, so can you. Ann Richards would be so proud of the opportunities and successes that our students have because of the school. And because of that, her legacy lives on. My mother dedicated her entire professional life to removing barriers for people who were disenfranchised. And in my mind, this school is a living legacy of what she started. I am overwhelmed by emotion walking through the halls here and just so wish that my mother could be here to see it because it is more than I think she ever imagined it could be and certainly more than I ever imagined. And to see these girls being successful and for the school to help them achieve what we set out for them to achieve is really an amazing and fulfilling thing.